Hello everybody, my name is Angela McFarlane and I'm a Professor of Education at the University of Bristol. I think if we're looking at the whole issue of underachievement, wh whichever sector of the population we're looking at, one of the things we have to grasp is that clearly whatever we're offering these children, they do not see the worth or the relevance of what we're offering them. And it's our job to convince them of the worth of that. Now, there are people who suggest that you kind of abandon the standard curriculum and you concentrate on doing things which will appeal to those individuals, whoever they happen to be. You find whatever it is that they're interested in and that's where you start. And of course there's some resistance to this idea. But we have to face the fact that every year we have getting on for a quarter of a million children who do not achieve five A to C's at GCSE or the equivalent. Now whatever we are doing for those children, it is not working. The other thing that's very worrying is an, an awful lot of those children actually were doing okay when they left primary school. So we've got at least two problems. We've got the kids who are already disaffected and dropping out of the system intellectually if not physically within primary school and then we've got a whole other tranche who are dropping out once they get to secondary school. Now it seems to me that one of the reasons that boys in particular may well be disengaging from traditional literacies is that I've yet to see a reading scheme that is based on narratives specifically designed to appeal to the kinds of things that get boys fired up. Now we all know that boys are more inclined than girls to be genuinely obsessive about topics when they're small. You know, I mean, Professor Baron Cohen at Cambridge jokes, you know, that, that every male brain is, is somewhat autistic. Um, I couldn't possibly comment. But this obsessive compulsive idea, we, you know, we all recognise it. The little lad who knows every single one of the Thomas the Tank Engine family of trains and moreover can identify them from a single square millimetre of paintwork. You know, there, is, there is this. Now, when kids are in that stage, they will consume anything that you give them that is about a topic that genuinely excites them. Now, there are all kinds of arguments for having particular content in the curriculum, but actually if what you're trying to do is learn to communicate through text, it doesn't really matter what the content is, provided you learn those skills. And I, don't, and I think we're missing a trick. You know, by having prescribed texts at that age, we are alienating the kids for whom those texts have no relevance. And it isn't that they don't want to know what texts do, whatever those texts are, but they want texts about things they're interested in. And I think you can, you can take that model all the way through. You have to meet the kids at least halfway. And there are so many generic skills about reading and writing in the greatest sense of those terms across multiple forms of text, about multiple areas of interest and, and knowledge domains that you can draw kids into once they've got those basic skills. But if you've lost them, if they've never learnt those higher order text decoding skills and text production skills, they can't learn. And of course the easiest thing then is to say, you know, it's not cool, it's not what I want to do, it's not, it doesn't, you know, this is not relevant to my culture. I mean, that, that's not what they're gonna say, but that's actually a version of what they're thinking. And so we've lost them. One of the advantages that you have if you have a technology-rich environment in your school, and by that I don't necessarily mean every kid has a device, but you have, let's say, you have a good internet access in your school. The first thing is, going back to my earlier point about meeting the kids where they are, you have no excuse for not having a text about a given topic. Because whatever it is, no matter how obscure the topic that a child is interested in, you can find them, if they can't find them for themselves, a relevant text of the kind you need somewhere on the internet that you can then use to work with them to help them develop their critical literacy skills. 
So the fact that we have now access to the world's libraries in every school is a phenomenal advance. Even if only the teachers had it, it's an opportunity for a phenomenal advance. So if you don't get the basics right and you don't introduce kids to core skills for critically engaging with texts early on through texts that excite them, you've really missed a trick and if they don't have those skills they are permanently disadvantaged in life not just in the education system.